Hey everybody, for those of you who don't know me, I'm the Plant Commander. If you're a Zelda fan who spends a good amount of time on YouTube, there's a good chance you've seen this video popping up in your recommended lately. I highly recommend you give it a watch if you haven't already. It's a great video going over one of the most tedious side quests in the entire series. However, there are a few details that that video fails to mention, and it turns out that this side quest is somehow even worse than we all thought. This number here? Yeah, that's a total lie. Let me explain. If you're playing a version of the game with save states, you can get a good idea of how the odds of getting new figurines are actually calculated in the game. Let's try betting one shell for a 20% chance of getting a new figurine that I don't already have. That's a 1 in 5 chance, with a 4 out of 5 chance of me getting a repeat. Sounds fair, right? Well, let's see what happens. Well, I bet one shell for a 1 in 5 chance and got a figurine that I already have. Doesn't seem too far-fetched at first. After all, there was an 80% chance that this would happen. But let's try something else here. By using the rewind feature on the Nintendo Switch version of the game, we're able to go back to the point where we chose what our odds would be. Let's bump them up a bit, shall we? I'm gonna add one more shell. This brings our odds up to 21%, giving us just over a 1 in 5 chance of us getting a new figurine. Since our odds are different from last time, that should mean the game re-rolls our figurine pull, right? Well, let's find out. Huh. That's odd. We got another repeat. That in itself isn't all that strange, after all, we had barely more than a 1 in 5 chance of getting a new one. What is a little bit weird is that we got the exact same repeat figurine as last time. That's weird, there's 130 of these things, so statistically that shouldn't have happened. But hey, maybe that's just a wacky coincidence this one time, so let's try again. Bump our odds up a little bit more, pull another figurine, and it's still the same repeat. This is starting to seem rigged. Alright, another try, bumping it up to 4 for a 23% chance, and... What? It's the same figurine! It's almost as if the figurine I get is predetermined before I actually chose my odds of getting a new one. But hey, maybe that's just because I still have less than a 1 in 4 chance, which, to be fair, is still pretty low. So let's try something a little bit more drastic. I'll rewind yet again, Pump my odds up to 39% by betting 20 shells. Okay, this is starting to get ridiculous. Why do I keep pulling the same repeat? Okay, let's back this up again. I'm gonna bet 31 shells for a 50-50 shot of pulling a new figurine. Statistically, at least according to this number right here, this should be a coin flip of whether or not I pull another repeat. And wouldn't you know it, yet again I got the same repeat. Alright, this is starting to get ridiculous. Let's give ourselves a statistically better chance of pulling a new figurine by betting a whopping 56 shells for a 75% chance. Pull the lever, and it's still the same repeat. At this point, there should only have been a 1 in 4 chance of getting a duplicate at all, let alone getting the exact same duplicate as before. This is definitely seeming rigged. Okay, rewind again, give ourselves an 80% chance. And... okay, finally, a new figurine. But why did it take going all the way up to 80% not just to get a new figurine, but simply to get a different one from the same repeat we kept pulling from 20 to 75%? Well, after testing this for a few hours, I think I figured out how these odds actually work. Here's my working theory. When you're getting ready to pull a figurine, the game chooses only two possible options, a figurine already in your collection, and one that you don't have yet. It also generates a random number between 1 and 100. That number is not your actual odds, but the threshold for how good your odds have to be in order to pull a new figurine. Let me visualize this for you in a way that's easy to understand. Imagine a chart scaling from 1 to 100, and every time you pull a figurine, the game puts a marker on this line at random. If your odds are anywhere below this line, you will get a repeat no matter what. But if you're above that line, you'll get the new figurine. But without cheating and abusing save states, it is impossible to know where the game put that line. That percentage that the game shows you when you're deciding how many shells to bet isn't actually your chances of the game randomly drawing from a pool of new and repeat figurines. What this number actually means is where on that line chart you're putting yourself. 
Let's look back at our test from earlier. I bet multiple different odds between 20 and 75 and got the exact same result every single time, but upon trying 80% odds, I got a new figurine. That means that for this particular poll, the game put that threshold somewhere between 76 and 80. This essentially means that putting myself at 75% odds did not actually give me a 3 in 4 chance of pulling a new figurine, because regardless of the number I chose up until that point, I got the same result every single time. I also tried setting my odds to 100% and it still gave me the same new figurine as when I set it to 80, so this goes both ways. Rewinding or abusing save states does not re-roll the figurine that it pulls from. All the game does is pick a random number between 1 and 100 and then tells you to pick a number up to 100. If the number that you picked is higher than the one the game picked, you get the new figurine, and if you pick the lower number, you get the repeat. So if the game is rigged in such a way that it's based on a random threshold the game decides arbitrarily, what does that mean for the player? Essentially, it means that this percentage you're choosing is completely pointless. There is no reason to bet any more than a single shell unless you're at the tail end of the quest with only a few figurines to go and more than enough shells to spare. You see, this number that the game randomly chooses is reset whenever you leave the room, meaning that even if you're playing on a platform with save states, it is still a complete waste of time and shells to bet absurd amounts trying to figure out where the game decided the threshold is. There was even a time where I got my odds all the way up to 99% and still got the repeat figurine. Why? Because there wasn't a 1 in 100 chance of me getting a repeat, the game just happened to randomly decide that its threshold for that specific pull was a perfect 100, making me guaranteed to lose unless I bet the max. Now, even though I have the ability to abuse rewind and save states in this version of the game, why would I waste that many shells to get that perfect pull when I could simply leave the room come back, and then the game will just choose a different number for me to try to beat with a random guess. You know, perhaps a number that isn't a perfect 100 so that I wouldn't have to waste that many shells? Now, you might think all of this is pointless because at the end of the day, you're still just playing a guessing game, and after all, the higher the number that you choose, the better your chances technically are of beating the number that the game picked. However, look at this the other way around and you'll quickly realize why spending anything beyond your base odds is completely pointless. If we assume that that threshold number the game picked for me was exactly 80, then there were only 21 numbers I could possibly have chosen that were above that threshold, and everything below that was a guaranteed loss. And without save states or a rewind feature, I would have no way of knowing that. The player also can't lower their odds past the percentage that they start at, meaning that your pool of numbers to choose from is actually smaller than that of the game itself. This means that by picking a random number that we're allowed to choose from, we statistically have a higher chance of winning than the game does. Again, let's look back at our experiment from earlier. I started with 20%, meaning that if I walk into the room and the number that the game picks from is 20 or lower, I am guaranteed to get the new figurine no matter how many shells I bet. This actually makes our odds higher than 20% because it's impossible for us to choose a number below that, but we do have the option of picking a number higher than that. But here's the catch. Why would you ever do that? There is no reason to waste your shells increasing your odds in this situation when there is already a minimum 1 in 5 chance that the game has randomly decided that you're going to win automatically anyway. Making any more than one shell that you spend for this particular pull being completely wasted because you were guaranteed to win anyway. And again, there is no way to know this without cheating. It certainly doesn't help that even if you get absolutely perfect luck somehow, don't have to farm shells, don't have to keep reloading save states or all that tedious stuff, you still have to mash through this man's dialogue 130 times at the bare minimum. But, since it's more beneficial to you to only bet one shell at a time, that makes the odds stacked against you, and thus you will more likely have to listen to this guy run his mouth thousands of times over the course of the quest. And I swear to god, if he gives me a rollabite figure one more goddamn time, I'm going to use it to bash his skull in until he passes away. And don't forget, all of this is just for a single heart piece. If you're playing the original GBA version of Minish Cap, I pity you. 
Trust me, I know. I 100% of this game as a kid back in the day, and this side quest was an absolute nightmare. But even now, with the technology to cheat our way through the worst quest in the series, not only does it still suck, but now I can prove it's been lying to us this whole time about how it actually works. Big shout out to Mr. Dr. Boy for inspiring this video, and once again, I highly recommend checking out his original video for advice on the best ways to get this nightmare of a heart piece, especially if you're playing on GBA. I put a lot of hard work into this video, and I really don't want all of that to go to waste, so if you enjoyed this, please leave a like, comment, and consider subscribing if you're interested. This has been the Plant Commander, take care of yourselves, be good to one another, and I hope to see you again soon.